Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is another Raid Shadow Legends video. We are looking at legendary champions today. It's my legendary tier list. I've been talking about it for a couple of weeks since I did my epic tier list and it is finally ready. Uh, it takes quite a lot of work to pull these together, so I think let's just get straight into it. The uh, This is going to be on like an Excel format. Um, the, what I've done here, so I've looked to do by champion where are they good in different areas of the game. So it's kind of similar to tier lists that are out there, but at least it gives us a bit more clarity. If you said to me, Hell Hades, how do I find a team that's going to help me in the spider? You can literally just filter on spider and say, you know what, I don't want to see someone who's a one, two or three. I want to see just the fours and fives in spider. Which legendaries can help me here? And then it just kind of leaves you the legendaries which are good. Now, why this tier list should help you more than perhaps some others out there is because you might not have realized that somebody down here in 67 out of 82 legendaries is actually pretty helpful on the spider. And you might have just seen someone like this far down and sort of said, oh, there's no point putting any effort into this guy because he's not going to help me anywhere. Well, actually, that's not the case. Most champions in this game, bar a few, are actually useful somewhere. You just kind of need to understand what their use would be. So what I've done then, I've just kind of ranked everybody one to five in all of the main areas of the game. Um, and then the total score here in terms of how they actually get ranked is just simply all of these different areas added together. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start at the bottom rather than at the top and just show you some of the champions which perhaps stand out for being just strong in a particular area. And even though they might be low on the tier list overall, it doesn't mean they're a poor champion. It just means they're not very versatile. This tier list probably shows more about versatility than it does about um, actual kind of strength in the game. So my old favorite here, he's sitting down in number 70. Ah, 70, Mountain King. I really want him. He is just an arena beast. Let's show you him in the game. So why is he an arena beast? Why is that? What's kind of forcing that out of him? So a few things. He's got a crazy high base HP. He's got an extremely high base resistance. So those two things combined are really great for Arena. He's then got, um, he basically just hits so freaking hard. So his, his damage is all based off of a combination of HP and attack. His base attack is very high. His base HP is very high. If you just stack him with HP and resistance and some defense, he is going to be one-shotting people all day long. He's got this A2, which ignores 50% of target's defense. And when we're in a, a meta, which is kind of focused on people being quite defensive, this hits really hard. He's got an A3 which ignores shield and, and block damage. So again, he can just kind of get through stuff. Um, and yeah, basically this one here is always passive. Increases the attack by 50% each time this champion kills somebody. So basically he can go ahead, nuke somebody down and instantly he's kind of got 50% more attack. Stacks up to 100% more. If you can imagine, that's just an insane ability or passive there. So really like him he's he's super cool in the arena he's super cool in the arena but as you see in my list he's not really that useful anywhere else if he's all you had you could probably run him in things like dragon and maybe ice golem but he's definitely not going to be really cool everywhere else so next one up errol similar sort of idea really errol's perhaps got a bit more versatility in his kit but he's mainly about the arena and i've just built one uh, perhaps i'll just show you one quick fight with him because he is a beast he can do some crazy numbers. Um, let's just go in for this team. So I've got him in this team here. Cardinal picks him up when he drops, if he drops. Uh, so errol has got abilities that basically ignore defense as well. So anytime you're ignoring defense, you've got a good chance of nuking somebody down. So let's see if we make sure we get a go here. Uh, I'll leave him down for a minute. It's all about Errol, not about Anifui. So he's got an A2 here, which has hits three times. It gets an extra 30% crit, so he only needs 70% crit. Um, and then each of these hits has got a 50% chance to ignore all of the defense. So we've got a defensive champion here. Watch this. Slam, slam, bye-bye, 48k on a defensive champion. So you can just see there the, uh, the value that he brings. Um, I'll show you his other kit as well. Again, I'm not going to pick up my other damage dealer because it's not going to help me show off Errol. Let's just wait for him to come back up. So he's got 
an A3, which we'll see next. Here, A3 steals all buffs from target enemy, then attacks the target. And again, he only needs 70% crit to get this off. I've got low accuracy, so he's probably not going to steal this buff, but he should do some good damage. Oh yeah, 48k. See you later. Uh, it did steal the buff as well, actually. It's quite nice. Um, and then his A1 hits hard as well, so let's just pull up any before we finish this off. Get back into the video. But yeah, Errol, really cool champion, but you need to pair him in the right way to get him being useful. Okay, so that's Errol. Um, let's have a look then. Baron, similar sort of thing again. Baron is only really super cool in the arena, unless you're manualing everything, in which case he can be helpful everywhere else. Uh, Vizier. Vizier is an interesting champion. Most people probably have heard of Vizier. Doesn't feature that highly in my tier list, albeit he's one of the best champions, if not the best champion, in the clan boss. So Vizier, he's a Dark Elf. I'll show you his kit quickly. Yeah, one of the best champions in the clan boss. Because of him, you can basically run very different teams. He's got an A1 here, which hits three times. Each of those times, if it's booked, has a 50% chance of increasing duration of every debuff on a target. That's why he's so good on clan boss. You can lay some poisons down, you can lay decrease attack, decrease defense. He will just keep that those debuffs running for the whole fight easily as well. He does it easily. So most times I finish a fight, I've got Vizier. Most times I finish a fight, there's about 40 stacks of poison, decrease attack, all of those stuff. Pretty much every fight, he keeps it going. For that sort of craziness he's also got really good base stats um, and he does bring a decrease attack on his a2 as well the only letdown on vizier is for clan boss is that he's got these two other uh, abilities that you can possibly land which means you you kind of clutter up the debuffs with stuff you don't really want um, he's also got this other ability which uh, he can spread uh, debuffs so if you run him on faction wars and Someone lays, I don't know, like a decrease attack, but it's only one version, or he lays his own decrease attack. His A3 then goes, and he can spread that decrease attack to everybody else. So it's quite cool, um, but I don't really find him that useful on other content, which is why he's kind of stacking freeze, and Arena is just not good at all. Um, but yeah, so that's Vizier. Let's keep going up a bit further. So what have we got here? You notice quite a few champions are literally just Arena specialists, and they don't really come over here. So Blood Gorged, very similar again. Blood Gorged is, he's recently had a buff which made him better, but he was kind of known as a bit of a Vault Lord for a while. Um, what is he, what is he, what is he, undead. So yeah, Blood Gorged, he's got, he's all known for this. So he's got an A3, he ignores all defense, and pretty much if you build him right, he'll one shot anybody in the game. If you one shot that enemy, they cannot be revived. So in the current meta with Arena, where there's lots of revive style champions, he completely nukes that down. Someone like a Tormund that self-revives, you only have to kill him once with Blood Gorged. Um, he's also now got a better rest of his kit since they've buffed him a little bit. So he's got an AoE on his A2, which puts one of each target steals on cooldown. So an A2 or an A3 is going to go on cooldown when this hits, but you do need accuracy for this to work. And then he's got an A1, which does have a decreased defense on it as well. So, And it's the big version. So yeah, he's a decent champ. His main problem is he's got such a low base defense that he's quite squishy and he's hard to build to keep him alive. So you have to build teams around him to keep him up. That's why he doesn't really do well in other content in the game. Um, let's keep going up then. So we've got somebody here, Solus. Solus is quite an interesting champion. Coming in at 57 on my tier list, but he actually rates a 5 in three areas of the game. And this is what I mean when it's like, check this out, because what you don't want to do is look at a champion and think, ah, oh, they rate lowly on a tier list. Well, yeah, he might do, but actually it depends what you want him for. If you want someone to help you with the Ice Dome, Solus is going to be fantastic. Um, so let's keep working our way up the list. Perhaps let's pull out um, Abess. Let's have a look at Abess. So she is scoring highly in quite a lot of areas, like, above average in all areas of the game except clan boss and she scores really highly in dragon so let's have a look at her sacred order so i do have an abess i've used her a lot in the game so what she is she's actually a bit like a zard gala in a way she's got an a2 with an aoe decreased defense and when booked up it goes to 75 percent chance of landing on everybody 
So it's a big version, it's a good ability. What she lacks actually is this being a 100% chance to land. She's actually worse than someone like a War Maiden even because of that. But she does damage, she's got really high base, base attack. She's got an A3 which hits really hard as well. Um, so, and, and the damage inflicted is proportional to either this champion's attack or the target's defense or attack stat, whichever is highest. So really interesting sort of terminology there. So you could build her with no attack at all. This would still hit really hard if the enemies have got high defense or high attack. So bear that in mind. If you're looking for somebody who's going to be your debuffer, you could do a best, make sure she's got high accuracy, make sure she lands this ability, and you don't need to build her with high attack to hit hard on her A3. Um, and then she's got an A1, which again is quite interesting. So she'll transfer a debuff from her onto its target. So on Dragon, for example, if, if she gets weakened cast on her, she'll throw that weakened back on the Dragon with her A1. So pretty cool champion. It's a shame about her A2 not being 100%. If it was, she would go way up the list in a lot of areas. So that's the best. Um, let's keep moving up. So Robar is quite an interesting one. Robar kind of stores well across the board. I don't know if you guys have seen my recent arena videos. Put him in a relentless set and he can go crazy just doing extra turn after extra turn. I actually had an arena video called Lockdown where he did 21 hits in a row on a Skull Crusher. It's probably the funniest part of a video I've ever been involved in. It was hilarious. Uh, well worth a look if you haven't seen it. But yeah, he's pretty cool. Um, let's keep moving our way up the tier list. So we've got someone here. Who we got here? Xavier. Xavier scores really highly in a few areas of the game, um, but she's actually not that great on auto, which is why she doesn't score higher. If you was to manual her on something like a clan boss, she would score much higher. I tried to rate this on a bit of a balanced view of, you know, how do most people play the game, I guess. Um, but she's got the ability, let's pull her up quickly, Xavier, Dark Elves. Um, she's got the ability to combust poisons. That's what she's known for. So she's got, I think it's this one, is it? Um, da, da, da. No. Here we go. So yeah, so basically she's got the ability to pl uh, place poisons on her A2. And then she's got the ability to, it's called Deadly Catalyst, ex basically explode all the poisons on somebody, kill them, and then block revive on, at the same time. So it's, um, it's an insane amount of damage this can kick out. It gets you through content pretty easily. Uh, it becomes quite a speed farm sort of setup, but she does that same explode poison things on the clan boss if you if you throw an auto, which makes her unusable really because you're doing less damage through those explosions than you would from the poison just sitting there. Um, so that's Savia. Let's keep moving up. I think we get into the top twenty and we start to pick out some of my faves. Um, Big and I would love. He's just like a a beast in most areas of the game. Does tons of damage. Um, i put him somewhere like a Spider of 4 because actually he's great as an AoE damage dealer in Spider probably up until around level 16, 17. After that, you're actually looking for more control and single target champs. He's still very good, but he's not top tier for me. Um, let's look at a couple others. Ultan is well worth a look. His kit is insane. Barbarians, number 15. Let's have a look at him. Also got a guide out on this guy. He's one of my favorite champions in the game. So he's got an A1, which is the best decrease attack in the game for clan boss, which makes him a 5 out of 5 for clan boss easily. That's the only ability actually that's that relevant for clan boss, apart from perhaps, yeah, apart from this, he increases defense on everybody in your team, which is, again is actually super cool for clan boss. So those two bits of his kit are really great. If you come away from clan boss, he also has this ability here where if he kills somebody, he gives everybody a shield. Um, and also if he kills somebody, this ability resets so he can just do it again. And he's got this ability that if he kills somebody, he revives a random ally with 30% of their HP. So for Faction Wars, he's a beast. For a lot of the content, if you're struggling, he's a beast like Ice Golems, um, Dragons, anything like that. Yeah, generally quality. He's an arena kind of specialist. Um, yeah, really love him, great champion. So let's jump on there. Obviously, you can look through this in your own time. Let's look at the top five. Now, what's interesting here is if I was to say to you who's the number one legendary in the game, I think most people would call out Marta. 
or at least top three. But when you kind of tier it like this, she, for me, drops down to 12, um, only because there's areas of the game that I don't think she's that top tier in. So I wouldn't take her into Ice Golems necessarily because she could trigger the big redemption hits with her counter-attack ability. So that's very dangerous to take her into somewhere like that. Um, and Arena, I don't think she's top tier either, even though she's good. So yeah, so let's have a look then. Top 10, I've got Sir Nick coming in at 10th. Pretty much good across the board. Uh, I wouldn't probably run him in Spider unless you don't have many other champs to replace him. Fire Knights again and Clan Boss, he's good, but in a specialist way, so he's good in specialist teams. Um, but I, I wouldn't class him as top tier. Krisk, again, I'd love a Krisk. I think he's one of the best champions in the game. He's only actually scores lower on the Fire Knight for me. Even that, he's very good at. I've put him as a free, maybe that's harsh, but he is top tier. And you start to see at the top here, basically all of these guys can pretty much be used in all areas of the game to some effectiveness. I've got a Warlord. Um, Warlord I have used in every single area of this game. And I still use him in, in what do I use him in? Still use him in Ice Golems. I still use him in Arena Offense and Defense. I, up until very recently, still used him in Spider. And I still used him in um, Clan Boss, but kind of swap stuff out now. My teams have become a bit more specialist. Bad Elkazar probably could be fives all across the board. I don't see him that much in Arena Offense and Defense. His kit doesn't really suit the speed of the meta for arena and the fact that you can't stop him doing an aoe hit is also quite risky in the current meta so that's why i put fours in the rest of the game he can literally go in any any team he can wear pretty much any type of gear set and still be effective so really cool valkyrie says pull her up barbarians valkyrie but coming in at number five she's really really versatile so she's one of the counter-attack champions with that counter attack comes a massive shield. That's why she's so good in the arena versus Marta. Um, and she is just a beast. So she has got a bit of turn meter control on her A1. She has got counter attack and shielding on her A2, which is huge. So the shield completely uh, scales off of defense. So the more defense you put on her, the more she gives her team as an AOE shield. It's a beastly shield, it's fantastic. Um, and then she's also got this passive around turn meter again. She brings a faction war um, increased defense aura, which isn't the best, but she still rates super high on my tier list. She's one of the best in the game. I would love her. Um, let's have a look at Duchess. So Duchess again, I would love to get Demon Spawn. I don't have her. She is so versatile. It's insane. I'm going to start with her passive because it's crazy. Reduces the damage taken by all allies from AoE attacks by 25%. If they've got a veil on, it goes up to 40%. Now, I've done some videos on this. I don't have one myself. I've done some videos of showing her and Norog with damage mitigation. It is real. It is insane. Um, there's so much AoE damage in this game that as soon as she starts throwing veils on people, you are taking so little damage, it's mental. Uh, she also brings a speed aura in all battles. She brings a shield every time she does an a, a, a1 for one of your lowest uh, HP champions. She hides people behind a veil. She does some increased attack, block debuffs. She's got so much good stuff in her kit. It's mental. She brings a bit of healing as well. Um, she's definitely top tier and she is definitely usable in all areas of this game. The only area where I downstored her a little bit was Fire Knights. Again, it might be harsh because she's definitely going to be decent there, but um, she's got a 4 out of 5 for that. Venus, I'm sure most people know Venus. She is just usable throughout the whole game. She is insane as well. She's got so much to her kit, it's mental. Um, I mean, if you're talking about you want someone that can do pretty much everything, she is your Swiss army knife. Um, she has got poisons on her A1. She's got decreased defense and weaken AoE on her A2. She's got HP burn on her A3, AoE again. She has got, uh, when she pairs with Cupidus, the chance to remove all buffs from all enemies. Um, and then she's got a chance to grant herself an extra turn after that as well. And she brings a massive HP aura in all battles. She's a beast. 
Uh, she's got a crazy base speed, very good base HP. The only single letdown from her is that she's got poor base defense. That's it. Any, I, I can't think of anything else. I, I can't think of a single other thing that I would change about her as a champion. She's a beast. I'd love to get her. She's absolutely insane. Um, and she's got a fancy dress. So what more can you need? What more can you need? Uh, that's Venus. Let's go to Draco. Draco is on everybody's lips right now. Um, I have got Draco not once. I pulled Draco about two weeks ago. I pulled a 10 pull yesterday and I only went and pulled. There's my normal Draco. Got him in stalwart gear. He's beastly. And then I only went and pulled a second Draco. <laughs> I don't think I need to. I don't think I need to. I'm going to quickly show you Draco in action in a speed run. Draco is a great end game champion for speedruns. Uh, yeah, let's do it. So basically in this sort of composition here, he does an AOE decrease uh, defense and weaken, which enables your damage dealers to just go in and romp some damage. So you watch this. It's basically just gonna go in, throw that decrease defense and weaken everywhere. Then we're gonna get the nukes and we get a reset from a Kaimar and we do the same again. I've recently done a, a guide on Draco. He's not just about this ability. He hits really hard with his A1 as well. I've seen him do well over 400k hits with his A1. And he's also got poisons as well, which means he's just versatile to be used everywhere in the game. Uh, let's pull him up quickly. What is he? He's a lizard of some sort. Um, so yeah, A1 basically hits more for every debuff that's on a target. So clan boss, he hits hard. Someone like a, any of the bosses, he'll hit hard. And then if he kills somebody, like let's say he kills one of the Ice Golem adds, surplus damage will then ricochet onto the next target, but it will triple. So if you hit somebody that's really low health, it will hit them, do the excess damage, and then triple onto somebody else. And that's how you get those big 400k plus hits. A2 drops four poisons at random. Um, each one is for three turns. That's huge. Um, you can book it down to a free turn cooldown as well. So it's just a mental ability. And then as I've just shown you there, you've got the decreased defense and weaken on his A3. Uh, he's got a faction war crypts boost as well. It's not that great for an aura. Um, good base stats, a little bit slower than some of the other top tier guys, but you can't boast him anymore. He's literally top tier, brilliant champion. Which leaves us with Raglin. So I've put Raglin five out of fives across the board. That's going to be controversial. People are probably going to say, what the hell are you talking about? I'm telling you now, she is a beast of a support champion. A beast of a support champion. Um, in the arena, she is clutch. She's just disgusting to, play, uh, to fight against. So where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Not in there. What am I looking for? A uh, Vanillard. Yeah, so what does she do? She's got an A1, which is a free hit which means instantly she's gonna be great for clan boss. Um, she also does some turn meter feel through this as well, um, which is just nice. As an A1, it's nice. She's got an A2 that removes all debuffs from allies, heals them, and the heal is proportional to this champion's attack. The base attack's a little bit low, but this is still a nice heal. And for arena, this is great. For spiders, this is great. For dragons, this is great. Um, for clan boss, this is great. So there's just, nice bit of of um and this heal is big as well it's like at least a third of their hp if you've got half decent stats four turn cooldown that's the only thing that perhaps is a little bit of a letdown here but this is a brilliant ability this ability is just disgusting book down to two turns look how few books you will need compared to other legendaries out there you can book her down to two turns she revives an ally 75 percent hp and a full turn meter bonkers it's absolutely bonkers so you could get one of your real hard hitter guys in there i've just done an arena video using cardinal it's got a similar sort of ability she can just revive that champion with big amount of their hp full turn meter and that champion could go and nuke somebody she gets it back again in two turns it's just crazy fast to beat this person to beat raglan in the arena is hard if they're built well Raglin and a Duchess on the same team, you might as well just never face them. It is disgusting. So she is cool. She's also got amazing aura, max aura for defense in 
all battles, all battles. A massive base HP, really good base speed, decent base stats everywhere else. And I think she is the best champion in the game. Um, so she's actually joint top on my list because there's a few that kind of go five out five everywhere. But guys, look, I'm going to put the link to this spreadsheet. It's now linked up with my Epic one. So Epic one and Legendary one are both on there. They both do the same things. Uh, this is going to be a sheet that I keep up to date regularly. So leave me a comment below. Let me know if there's anyone I've got completely wrong. Um, anyone that you use that you say, hold on a minute, I've tried them there and, and they do better or they do worse. This will be regular updated. Um, yeah, guys, this is Hell Hades signing out.